So two of the biggest games that came out this week are Borderlands the pre-sequel, which you can see Terra's review for right here, and Bayonetta 2, which you can see my review for right here. Now, one thing that both of these games have in common is that they weren't quite created by the people who created the originals. Borderlands was developed by 2K Australia with oversight from Gearbox, and I believe Anthony Birch, the writer of Borderlands 2, has come out and said he wrote about 30% of the script of this game. Um, likewise, Bayonetta 2 wasn't directed by Hideki Kamiya, but it was supervised by Hideki Kamiya, and in reviews with Kamiya, he has said that he wrote about uh, the entire story and did some scenario building, but wasn't the director of the game. The game was actually directed by a producer from Bayonetta 1. Now, what both of these games have me thinking about is the idea of authorship in video games, and it's something we don't really talk about a whole lot, I feel like. There are definitely auteurs like Kamiya uh, in the game space, but they're very rarely seen or talked about or heard from, and it actually seems like that happens in service of games being able to continue without their creators. I think the biggest and best example of this, in my memory, is the Katamari Damacy games. Those games were created by a man named Keita Takahashi, who a few GDCs ago gave a speech detailing the history of the series, and there are a few interesting nuggets that can be gleaned from that. First of all, um, the fact that Katamari Damacy was to him a game about consumerism and consumerist culture. In the game, you're rolling this ball around, and you're collecting more and more things, and the ball just grows by adding stuff to it, but the only reason you add stuff to it is to make it grow more, and you're really just amassing things for the sake of amassing things, which to him, I guess, is a reflection on capitalist culture. The other big thing that he revealed, though, was that he never wanted to make a sequel to Katamari Damacy. Um, there's a lot of speculation as to how it went down. Um, I believe one telling speculates that um, Namco allegedly said they would make a sequel with or without him, so he came on for the second game, and then after that point, they continued to sort of milk the Katamari Damacy series, and he eventually left and stopped working on it. He left Namco completely. Which is really interesting to me, because I actually think in some ways that is a better commentary on consumer culture and capitalism than he could have ever devised, right? Like, it's almost the perfect ending that this game that was about amassing things for no reason continued to get sequels and continued to get new installments for no reason other than to make money. Like, that's actually, I, you'd think he'd almost be happy with that because that's a better comment. Anyways, um, the point is that not every creator wants to keep making the game in the series, and conversely, sometimes a creator can, wants to keep making a game in the series and can't. I think everyone is pretty familiar with Keiji Inafune, the man who created Mega Man, who wanted to continue making those games at Capcom and got so frustrated with the bureaucracy of the company that he eventually just left, made a Kickstarter, and is making his own spiritual successor. And it's kind of something you see happen a lot um, across the industry. Now, another type of relationship that resembles this is what happens when a studio disbands but the publisher still holds the rights to the game. So, I think a really good example of that would be the upcoming Geometry Wars 3 from Activision, which is interesting because Activision shut down Bizarre Creations, the developers of Project Gotham Racing, but retained the rights to all their games, including Geometry Wars. So the original creator of Geometry Wars is a man named Stephen Cakebread, who I interviewed about the game years and years and years ago on a website me and Anthony used to work together on called Bite Jacker, and it was clear that that game was very much his baby. It was a game that he devised in his free time, the original one was, um, and that he spearheaded the development of the sequel on. So it's it's just interesting to me to see what happens uh, when games go on without their creators or when creators want to keep making their games but can't. Um, there are obviously like a million little versions and little permutations of this relationship all over the industry. I mean, personally, it's, it's tough for me because if a game is still fun, if it's still a worthy successor to the original game, it almost doesn't really matter that much to me as a player. But like at the same time, there's a part of me that feels some sort of obligation to like respect the original intent of the person who invented this thing, this series, this franchise, and it almost makes me only want to play games by that person. So it's, it's just tricky because I feel like in this industry, more than any other, we have gotten really good at ignoring like the people who make these games, the directors and the creators, and I don't know, it's just, it's, it's a tricky sort of space to navigate, and I'm, that's kind of why I'm making this video, is to open it up to you guys, and, and I guess that's what I want to know, is like, how much do you really care about whether or not a game is made by the series creator, by the franchise creator? Does, does it matter to you? Is that a factor when you play a game? Or do you just play the game, have a good time with it, and never think about who made it? Um, let me know in the comments below what you guys think. Um, just a really interesting question to me as we move into this uh, sort of stage in the industry where some franchises have been around so long that they're going to have to go on with or without their creators. It's a, it's a cool, weird time for video games and it's raising a lot of questions about authorship that are interesting to me. So yeah, thank you guys for watching and I will see you next time there's a video game. Of things that feel like natural additions to the series, this has co-op now and I played about, I'd say 20 to 30 minutes, maybe a little less of a co-op with a, a random colleague who was also uh, in the area and it is exactly what you'd think it would be. I mean, I think anyone who played Far Cry 3 felt like that game was like conspicuously